Hello to a very long overdue video that people have been asking for which is a guide through my controls for using an Xbox 360 controller in simulator mode or full real battle. You're going to have to excuse the music being louder than it should. I'm having major problems with recording audio in that there's some weird interference I cannot get rid of. I had a little talk about this in my last video which is nothing to do with airplanes, to do with tanks. Uh, which I did a while back and I've been promising this video for ages it's just I've been caught up in personal stuff plus this issue with the sound is constantly delaying me so with that aside hopefully with the music a bit louder than usual it should get rid of that annoying interference and I can work through this and my voice being its loud and cheerful self shall be heard clearly over while I discuss as I go through control by control the setup I have for my 360 controller. So forewarning right at the beginning this is for every single element of control you do with your plane you should put to the test. You should do this in a test flight and every time you make a slight change you should immediately go and see how it affects the plane because the truth of the matter is there is no definitive this is the setup for using a 360 controller. It really comes down to your own personal feelings. So, working through my controls, I shall now tell you what I have set up in Full Real Battle and what button does what. So I'm going to go to the control menu, there will be no gameplay footage sadly, uh, it's all just going to be me going through the menus explaining what button does what. So if you can go and grab your 360 controller in hand, we shall work our way through this. So let's start with the basic controls starting with small caliber guns and large caliber guns and additional guns these go to your triggers They're at the back I have small large small and large set to my right trigger while I have small and additional guns set to my left trigger the idea being with my right trigger I fire everything I have in the hope of killing whatever it is I've got within range while my left trigger is either used for ranging with a small caliber gun or if it's additional guns it's usually for something like say the HS129B3 using that using the uh, well it's the sorry one second with HS129B it's small caliber with the ME410 uh, U4 the B or A variant the additional guns would be the 20 mils on that or it'd be the gun pods on a 109 I rarely if ever fly with gun pods so they don't really come up as I said earlier, this is a lot of this is coming down to personal preference. I fly almost exclusively fighters in uh, similar battle. I only ever take out non-fighters in situations such as in the closed beta with tanks. I tend to take the HS129 out in full rebel because it was hilarious trying to hit a fucking tank in it. Quite hilarious. So, yeah, triggers for that. Uh, nothing for dropping bombs or firing rockets because, again, I flew exclusively fighters with this setup, so I don't have anything set for them. Same with Shrag Music. Now, there is an option to set that, and that will be the Y button because at the moment, you'll, well, not the moment, you'll see this later, I use the Y button for something very inconsistent, very pointless, but it's for personal preference. But you could set that to a dropping a bomb or firing a rocket or using the Shrage Music guns. Uh, well to activate them and that would be the Y button so you can keep that in mind but uh, moving on uh, reload weapons it's simulator so nope that doesn't count toggling gear my gear control goes to the back button it says button 6 here that is the back button what that essentially means is once I take off, I tap the back button, my gear goes up. I tap the back one, gear comes down. Very simple. It's an out of the way button that I'm not going to accidentally hit while frantically trying to fly. and But it's also one that's well within reach when I need it. And lock target not needed. None of them are needed. Throttle axis. This is quite simple for me. I have A set for increasing the throttle and the X button for decreasing throttle. I have also, as you can see down here, hold throttle for WEP. So when you hold down A, you WEP. And I think if I look in here, uh, no, you don't do it in here, it's later on. Uh, close that. Uh, I also have, when you hold down X, it activates your brakes. 
So once you've decreased the end, and if you want, if you're trying to break while landing, you just tap the X button. Now, the roll axis and the pitch axis. These all go to your left analog stick. So the roll is left or right on the analog stick. Here is where things get really, really fiddly. First thing first, do not have to keep the value of disabled axis. Leave that on no. More importantly though, no dead zone. Keep your non linearity as way down as you can. And then there's the multiplayer, plier, and correction. You are really going to need to tweak these for your personal preference. Because essentially, your multiplier. Sorry, one second. Sorry, I actually had to adjust the audio there because it did get ridiculously loud. Um, hopefully, the background interference won't be too much. But yeah, your multiplier and your correction. And basically, the multiplier affects how much uh, your uh, pushing and pulling of the axis affects how much it's multiplied. Essentially, how much one little movement by you is increased by artificially by the computer. So you can have a set your multiplier is very high, in which case even the slightest touch would have you overcompensating a lot. Um, I recommend keeping the multiplier down quite low because you don't have a lot of space to work with in the 360 controller and joysticks encourage you to put the, the multiplier down very low. If I remember this correctly, yes I think they do. But the 360 you're kind of hitting somewhere in the middle. Corrections another one which is personal preference that is where the game auto corrects for you and uh, I, I leave that at zero. The basically the main one here is the multiplier. You need to get that right and the non-linearity. Everything else you could just keep at zero and keep the value of the axis. That's for the uh, roll. I think when you look at the pitch, I think the pitch is different to the no it's the same as one as well. Okay, sorry about that interruption. Yes, you need to set your roll and pitch sensitivity as well as the axis, but definitely go on the axis. So your roll is set to left to right on the uh, left analog stick. Pitch axis is up and down on the left thing. Again, keep it no. Invert. Definitely invert the left one so that way you pull back on the thing to pull up and push forward. Again, dead zone on energy. Keep them down as low as you can. Multiplier is the main one you're looking at here because the multiplier is again compensating. Uh, I keep correction at zero. Essentially, this gives you a, almost a one-to-one -one, um, relationship between your controls on the 360 controller. And thing. The, the problem about putting too high of a multiplier with a 360 controller is what you'll find is you'll be throwing yourself into a spin far too often, especially with the roll axis. Less so with the pitch. You, you do have a bit of leeway to pump up the pitches, multiplier a small bit. But definitely with the roll. No, sorry, I'm wrong. Yeah, the pitch you don't play around because essentially when you're turning the plane to go into a turn, you know, you roll it to its side and you pitch up or down. What I'm finding a lot is if you have the multiplier up too high or the sensitivity up too high, the plane will throw itself into a flat spin and you don't want that. So it is a lot of this is tweaking them those sensitivities. You want to tweak them here with the multipliers and then you want to tweak them out here with this roll and pitch sensitivity. Uh, as you can see I have the pitch sensitivity lower than the roll sensitivity because the roll is not so much an issue and I tend to fly the one on the, the Focke Wolf 190D9 in simulator battle and having a good roll is great on that plane. Um, sorry that's a bit of a trend. Then you got the yaw axis. I kind of cheat with the yaw in that I don't put it to a stick. Instead I put it to the shoulder buttons, so the left and right shoulder buttons, and I have them set to do the maximum in each direction. So again, don't keep the value, don't invert, uh, don't have relative control. Uh, this will actually put the correction down quite a bit, and again multiplayer get the one. You really only Apart from uh, when you're taking off, because you find in simulator battles the planes will pull usually to the left, uh, except with the Russian planes they pull to the right, uh, and you need the uh, yaw to correct. Once in flight, you use the yaw now and then, but it won't be your main force control. That's why it's okay to relegate it to the shoulder buttons, where you have to be very consciously aware that you're about to use it, rather than... 
uh, needing it on hand at all times. So shoulder buttons, they're very good for it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else here that sticks out that I need to be aware of, except for flaps. I have flaps set to B to toggle the flaps. Um, that basically goes for the automatic, you know, combat or raised with the recent patch that actually makes a combat flaps tear your thing off. This has become more important to be self aware of. And the all the brake buttons, as I mentioned earlier, they all t go to X, so that after you've uh, basically cut your end, cut your speed down, and you're trying to stop on a runway, you're tapping the X button to hit the left and the right brake. Uh, air brake, not to. You could potentially set the flaps down and up to X and Y if you've no use for those buttons, but I use Y for something else and. Uh, the D-pad could also be an option for playing with flaps, but they actually that actually goes to something much more important that I'll get to now in a minute. Um, that's basic controls. Moving on. Trimming. Trimming is very, very important in simulator battle. You'll be using it a lot. It also will save your life more often than not. Get you back home with a badly injured plane. If not, it's just good for keeping your plane steady, especially with a 360 controller. With a joystick, you can get yourself in a comfortable position where you're holding the joystick slightly back and, you know, flying steady. But it's not encouraged there, and it's not definitely not encouraged with a 360 controller. Where it's, it's a lot more annoying on your thumbs to be holding the left uh, stick just slightly back to keep your nose in the right position. And that's where elevator trim comes important. Elevator trim I have set to the, let's bring up the access for it. This is one where it's really down low for a reason. No, mo do not, definitely do not put them up on this. But sensitivity down low, uh, make it relative control. And I, so what I have here is I have it set that when I tap up on the D-pad, it increases the value of my elevator trim by one. And what I find is, depending on the plane, you need a elevator trim of plus 12, plus 15 when climbing initially after you take off. And that is what I have to kind of say here, that I could tap this as the plane. In fact, I actually do this before I even take off. As I'm on the runway and I'm just starting the engine up, I tap the increased elevator trim button about six or seven times before I even start moving that way my elevator is already in a position that I'm gonna be getting altitude right from the get-go and once I'm up in the air and I've got an altitude I want I just tap up and down until it hits a value that I can I can hold a steady uh, climb at and that way I can let go of the left thumbstick I don't have to keep my thumb on it to keep the playing at a steady value and allows me then to focus more on looking around it gets you those points where you can kind of relax back and start observing your surroundings in that case that's why relative control sensitive very important because there will be points where you want to completely cut out the elevator quickly so you want the relative control sensitivity low enough that you don't overcompensate but still high enough that you can hold down the down button or hold up the up button and quickly drop your elevator back to zero or quickly increase it to a point. Uh, you will be using the elevator trim a lot for when you've just been attacked but you've gotten away, they've hurt you because you could use it to basically keep your plane flying in conjunction with the less used but just as important rudder trim axis. Now. There is aileron trim axis. I don't have them set for a very specific reason. Very, very, actually, I don't think any of them, none of the German planes have aileron trim axis. None of the German planes do, and I don't think any of the Russians do. I think only the American and the British have aileron trim. So if you're predominantly flying them, maybe, yeah, set up a control where it's ailerons instead of the rudder. Ailerons. Bleh. Ailerons instead of the rudder. But I personally recommend you can get the same effect as the aileron trim with a rudder trim axis, and that's available on almost every plane. Uh, again, keep the sensitivity down low, especially with rudder trim, because if you overcompensate, you will basically flip your plane. Uh, well, not flip it, but you will basically put it in a really bad way and 
put yourself into the ground. The truth is you're not going to use rudder trim axis as often. You might use it at the beginning when you're uh, taking off if you want to tone down that um, the engine pulling you to the left without having to hold down the the, uh, the rudder yaw. You can actually trim off a good chunk in the opposite direction so that the plane stays somewhat steady and then you have to reset it when you get up some altitude. Um, you can use a small bit of tr rudder trim during the air, but you won't really use it as much. Where you really would use this a lot more than the pitch is if you get your wing shot up and you're trying to return to base. This can save your life. This can keep you in the air long enough to get home and to land. It, 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 it can help, especially... Basically, you know that weird scenario where people keep accusing uh, instructor of... Um, you know, basically, instructor being too powerful and helping way too much. This is what the instructor is doing. When you get those scenarios where you get a Russian plane that had to get a black wing, yet they're able to keep it steady, it's this that's keeping them steady. It's basically the instructor has automatically set the right value of rudder trim to keep the plane. You can achieve the same in simulator. You just need to find it, and it it, it, lot, it takes a lot of just practice and the right feel for your planes to be able to set the rudder trim just right that you can keep yourself level and get home. I've had games where I've been in a Focke Wolf and I've been shot to shit but I have rudder trimmed myself just enough that I've flown home and landed and, able, and been repaired and it really does come down to the rudder trim but you have to remember rudder trim is it's not a definitive thing you will find as you decrease your speed or increase your speed like elevator trim how the trim affects the plane will start shifting you'll find as you get faster you don't need to put as much rudder trim is but as you get slower you need to put a lot more trim in and vice versa so it is definitely fielding but i i have the d-pad because it's out of the way but it's kind of in a very logical clear area you're not going to accidentally hit it but at the same time you're not going to uh be frantically searching for it engine control again not a lot here and not a lot here because i fly predominantly fighters and the 360 controller is definitely not one for engine controls now you could set up your engine controls with a keyboard nearby and basically just have it so it's something that you can tap on usually your numpad or something making adjustments as you're flying i fully su suggest and support such a notion i haven't got that set up not yet and i probably won't in a long time uh because i don't feel i need to at the moment i'm perfectly comfortable the way i'm currently flying with my 360 controller i get kills especially in my fucker wolves and other high energy planes um and i've hadn't had a situation where engine control is the man i don't fly bombers and so on so engine control isn't a big deal for me but the basic engine control which is the toggle the engine on and off i have set to the start button which is really really cool because it's start and you start your plane so again buttons out of the way enough that you're not going to accidentally hit it but logically in a good position to grab it tank control is not set up view controls this is where you're going to get a lot more now uh first things first zoom camera this is basically the zoom in your sight into your sights which you will use a lot in simulator because you want to line up those shots as you're pursuing something i have that set to the left analog stick you're clicking it in that's a button yes that's obviously a button but it is a button you click it in and you basically zoom in so you could be flying around controlling your pitch tap the button you zoomed in uh, tap the button again, you zoom back out. Sometimes this button gets a bit buggy. You might need to quickly test fly to check that it's working right before you launch into a game. I've had games where it didn't work for some reason, but once I hit escape, I went and reapplied the command in controls. It works fine. So it's weird like that, but it does. Uh, toggle side. This is the absolutely minimal uh use i have the most minimal use button i have in the game toggle sight is set to the y button on my controller and all the toggle sight does is it turns off the sight the gyro sight on the front of your fighter so that you can actually see without having a sight it's a rather irrelevant control but i use it because it gives me kind of more clear view of what's ahead of me and 
that's pretty much it. I don't use it really for anything else, and that's all it does. And as I pointed out earlier, you could take that Y button and put it to other uses that could be effective. But I said have it set for this out of habit. And yeah, uh, you can set it that way yourself. I don't recommend it. I don't discourage it. It's just that extra button left over that I just found a use for. All of these don't affect simulator except for down here in the view axis. This is where it gets really, really important. So the view of the x-axis. Now, first things first, these do need a dead zone. Because unlike the left analog stick, uh, where you want the full range using this is you do want a point where you can let go of the controller and it shifts back to uh, front of view. Again, keep value of disabled axis, don't invert, and um, a small bit of non-linearity. More important though is the multiplier. Because here, the multiplier takes it to the full range you can move your control. If you set the multiplier to 1, you actually cannot look that far because the range of an Xbox 360 analog controller is quite small. So if you've it set, you can't look the whole way up. You'll actually only look as far as about up and slightly forward, which isn't very helpful in a... Um, it's not helpful at all, basically, in a um, fighter plane. You really need to be able to look as far up as you can. So I've put a 0.5 multiplayer on this, above the standard 1.0, because that allows me to take my head a bit further up so I can look directly up. So if there's someone above me, I see them. I could put the multiplier even a bit further, so if I pull the controller back, I can actually look up and behind me, <clears throat> which might be really wise, except... The more of the multiplier you put in, the harder it is to kind of look in the sort of in-between areas of, of the extremes. You want it so that you can you want it so that you can just slightly lean on the right analog stick, which this is all set to, to look up just enough to see if something's above you. But you don't want it that if you tilt it, sli tilt it slightly, <clears throat> your view goes completely back to the back of your head. You want it to be able to have some sort of control. So the more multiplier you put in, the less detailed control you're going to have, but the further you can look. And this is a real kind of delicate work because you want to get it so that you can look far enough to react to something coming at you in one of your blind spots. <clears throat> but you also want it that you have enough control that you can scan around you and openly see if anything is coming. Uh, with the x-axis 1.5 y-axis on the other hand 1.6 the reason for that is if I have this the right way around I think this is the right way around again small bit of dead zone the multipliers up high uh, this time yeah I have these back to front uh, the y-axis is this is the up down being an idiot um, the x-axis is rather important if I find it again because you want that 0.5 because if you have a 1.0 you look basically directly to your left or directly to your right that 0.5 lets you look left or right and a big bit behind the important thing about the x-axis is and the reason why the um, there's no correction being applied here is I want it that if I tilt my controller rapidly left not tilt it but if I tilt the right analog stick rapidly left or right I will instantly see behind me to that side so I can quickly see if someone's pursuing me it's like a snap check <clears throat> so you need that 0.5 to do that but you don't want to do it too much because you also want to be able to look at what's directly to your left and what's directly to your right and scan the CVC an enemy so it, this is a real delicate one that you you can you don't even need to take off you can park the plane on the runway in a test flight and just get it so that you can snap check to see what's behind you but also at the same time be able to see what's out to your left and what's out to your right while flying easily enough and spot any trouble or a potential target so they, these are really important to get right uh, let's see anything else on this section no I think that's it it's just miscellaneous now uh, 
the HUD, not needs a tactical map if you do not have a second monitor. Uh, where you can watch the uh, online map on, which yes, there is a thing. If you have a second monitor or even an iPad, or hell, you can do it on an iPhone, but it's not very effective. There is a an internet address you can go to, which I'll put in the. Uh, I'll put this. I'll put that internet address in the information section. That basically you go to that address while you're flying, and it will show a map of the current battle and any if any important information. You know. Um, if enemies been killed, any chat messages, anything, and you can put that on a second monitor. I have it on a Cintiq here somewhere, uh, so you can keep an eye on what's happening in the battlefield while still being able to focus on your flying. If you can't have a second monitor, like I did until recently, you can set a tactical map to your right analog stick, clicking it in. And that way, it's kind of the same logic as the button you do to look around is the same button you do to look at your map. Uh, and it, it basically runs opposite to the zoom button. So <clears throat> that's the last of the buttons. That's all the buttons covered? Yes, I believe so. Any other last things? No, one final thing, <clears throat> excuse me, that is not to do with game control, but it's to actually do with. Where is it? No, 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 no. Here it is. No. Mouse wheel. Very important here. Don't know why it's off, actually. It should be set to this. Your mouse wheel should be set to the zoom axis. And with good reason. I'll show you now why. So we're just going to go into a quick test flight. When you get into a game... Uh, the 360 controller is not plugged in, so we won't be doing any flying. But when you're in a game, the very, very first thing you should do is, with the mouse wheel, don't move the mouse, but just with the mouse wheel, roll back. Because what that will do is that will give you a much wider standard view. Because the, what the game starts you with is something akin to that. But if you pull back, boom, you're getting your left and right uh, peripheral vision opened up. So you can spot, you can chase things a lot easier. <clears throat> and again, that's the see, that's the full range of looking behind you, and you want it so that when you look up and you look down and you look those ways, you get the full range with the 360 controller. And if you do not increase the multiplier, you'll only go as far as something like there, which is no good. I think if you have a 1.0 multiplier in the one of the axes, it only goes up to here. Which is not useful at all. You really need it to be able to go straight up. And you want it so that the back will go all the way to here. So you want to get that multiplayer up to 1.5 at least, if not more. And uh, yeah, that's that. Just remember the mouse wheel, when you get into game, set. make sure it's set to view controls and roll it back so that you get the thing. And uh, if you're worried about if it's not uh, lined up correctly, just use the zoom button to check. That it's lined up so that the gun sight is the middle of your view. And then roll back. And boom. <coughs> You'll find with planes like the 109, because the gun sight's a bit on the right, you kinda you're favoring your right a bit. Um but you want it so that the gun sight's in the middle so that when you click that zoom button, it zooms directly in and keeps the gun sight smack bang in the center of your screen. Okay. And I think that is it. That is Simulator Battles with a 360 controller. A rather dry episode, but people have been asking for it. And I've been saying I'll do it at some point. But I could not promise it until now. <laughs>